Hi everybody, Jacob here. Welcome back to my channel. Today I am in very regal and Byzantine attire because, hi, because I'm going to uh, review a kind of a mythological creature within the Chanel realm of perfumes. And that perfume is on Fleur de Chanel. It's a flower by Chanel or a Chanel flower or a, Ch a flower of Chanel or Chanel's flower <laughs> or one of Chanel's flower however you want to translate it. I bought this years ago in the States. And um, this perfume was originally created in 1999 by Jacques Paul, or Paul, or however you pronounce his name. Uh, the used to be uh, head perfumer of the House of Chanel, now his son took over. Apparently uh, Jacques has retired. Um, this baby was purchased in New York in the Soho Boutique way back in 2000 something. I don't remember exactly when. Interesting, it is made in USA. So this perfume is a bit of a mythological creature because it keeps popping up and disappearing again and it's only on Saint de Chanel boutiques. As of now, it's discontinued officially, but you never know. It can always pop up from time to time. Um, I haven't used it much as I kind of wanted to, you know, protect it and the gold doesn't really oxidate on the bottle, but kind of does tend to get a bit of patina on it. Now let me try to rub that off. Ah, kind of okay. Anyway, so um, this is the um, Fleur de Chanel the bottle. It's a 35 milliliter bottle. Um, that is the only size that was produced back then. And as you can see on the bottle itself, this little three-dimensional thing here is a camellia flower. Now the camellia flower has no scent. It is famous for not having a scent. But uh, the idea was to create a perfume that would, if ha had a camellia a scent, this this is how the camellia would smell like. So let's see how the camellias would smell like. All right. Also interesting to notice is that the uh, spray uh, is a different color. <laughs> spray is like silvery and the rest is gold. And of course, there's no way that's gonna focus on it because it never really wants to. Anyway, hard to depict gold with cameras like this. Um, it is an eau de toilette and that's the sticker. A lot of text in the title and the name, so it looks a bit weird, looks a bit off because the, the name of the perfume is very long. All right, I mean, it's kind of intense. So it has citruses, green notes, and jasmine. That's kind of all I uh, get uh, within um, online reviews. Kind of itches me a little bit. Let's see if I could find more information on it, but it's interesting how this perfume, I mean, it is very green and it's very ceramic-y powdery, <laughs> if that's an option, like a per ceramic powdery scent. Um, nothing. There's not very much on this perfume online. Um, because, you know, it, it disappears. It reappears, but then it disappears again. So this one, it's as if you'll be walking in a garden of sorts, you know. It's uh, definitely like a, a, a garden scent. Um, it's strange because it almost makes, it really makes me itchy and causes me like hay fever, <laughs> allergy. So there's definitely something in here that is very natural and irritating me. It's extremely natural. I mean, for a Chanel perfume, of course it also has its aldehydes. I'm sure it has its portion of artificial ingredients. But there's something in here that is uh, just... Okay, this is what it is. To me, um, you're, you're on, the, on the seaside. I mean, you've been swimming in, in, in the sea, not the ocean, just the sea. 
salty of course, uh, all day long and now we're close to sunset and everything gets really warm, the light, they have the reflection of the sun on the waves of the water, you know, it just glistens, it's like, it's like glitter that just sparkles and it becomes golden yellow and this like intense gold yellow which is just like this here, just like shines uh, on top of the water as the sun is going down, so you get these hues, these gorgeous hues of orange and, and yellow, and then it slowly goes into red, and you're still wet, and the salt is, you know, the water has dried off your skin, but you have the salt residue on your skin, and you feel it kind of tightening a bit, and your beach is not a sand beach, it's like a pebbly, stony beach, and right next to it is the restaurant with a garden, uh, where you will, you will have a gorgeous, you know, meal of, of, of fish, and but to get to your table, you have to pass through this, this garden that has kind of collected the scent of the sea, you know, uh, but at sunset. That's exactly how this smells. I mean, it's mind-blowing. It's mind-blowing how much this perfume influences my imagination. Um, it's also earthy. I smell like a buttery, powdery, earthy texture to it as well. There's something in there that just causes me to want to lay down on the ground and just inhale that beautiful sea air, that healthy sea air, salty sea air. It's definitely a flower that grows on the seaside to me, not something that would grow inland, like deep inland. This this one is definitely more for the, for the seaside. Um, It's very Mediterranean as well. There's a bit of maybe just a bit of sweetness that is reminiscent of honey. Um, but it's not um, overpowering or bad in any way. But the perfume itself is intense. Now I've had this for quite some time. I, I keep it sealed off from light, like no light touches it. Um, and yet uh, it has become more intense. Uh, it has become more intense with time. It's like... Um, like white cer <laughs> Chanel ceramic, you know what they use for their watches? That type of milky, thick, rich white. And add like powdery scents to it. That's, that's what this perfume is. It's, crazy. It's amazing. And the, the actual package is um, not in glossy paper. It's like made in this rough paper. It's beautiful. Very simple. And of course, there's just too much light coming in. So we don't really... Oh, come on. Can we see it or not? Let me see. Okay. I don't know, guys, if you can see this better now. Can you see it any better? I hope you can, just like the texture of this little thing. I know it's dark. <laughs> oh my God, come on. Give me some more light, thank you. Not too much. What do I think about this um, perfume in general is it's not an every, I mean, it's, okay, silage. It stays quite close to the skin. A longevity, oh, it'll last. It won't last too long. It's not a perfume that like messes with you and, and does whatever it wants, despite of what you need. But um, it'll be there for, for, for a while. And it's so, so, so beautiful, natural, that uh, it's almost a pity to really use it too much because it, it definitely causes uh, addiction. <laughs> In a way, um, it's a bit darker. I don't know if I'm doing it too dark or too light. Anyway, let's try to do it darker. Because it kind of causes addiction, if you want. Uh, because it, it makes you desire and crave nature. And that's something I've been noticing as of late in, in Chanel perfumes. I, I don't know, maybe it's just me and it's my state of mind right now. Like my need to go into nature uh, and uh, just, you know, forget about... <laughs> mankind and uh, machines and everything you know where the directions we're going towards uh, and just just drift away in, in my own fantasy dream world surrounded by these gorgeous scents 
Um, so maybe it's just me, but definitely, I think if anybody has ever read uh, Walden, the the book of uh, David Thoreau, uh, you know, his like kind of came like a poet book, but it's like an essay book, like of, you know, in 1800s, late 1800s, he decided to isolate himself, go live into nature, like for a year without money. And it was a really interesting topic back then because um, he wanted to kind of analyze how it is to, already back then, you know, to live a life without economy. Uh, so it's a really interesting book. It's an interesting collection of, of thoughts and, you know, um, both political and emotional thoughts on, on that topic and subject. And he moved into the woods and lived there. So to me, had he done his experiment close to the seaside, that's the perfume. That's like the scent surrounding this Hermit that decided to kind of just uh, isolate himself from society and try to write a book for society to tell them how it is, you know, to to live in uh, in isolation or to live without money, basically. Of course, then you know, again, myth and legend shrouds everything, and apparently his mother would be bringing him food on a regular basis, so he didn't really live, you know, like he kind of <laughs> preached that he would uh, uh, allegedly. So here we go. Gossip from the 1800s today. It's never too late for gossip, right? So, um, on Fleur de Chanel is, 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 de Chanel is, um, definitely something to catch. I've been told that it might be coming back, like from time to time it pops up, because mind you, this was from 1998, and then it was taken off the market, and then it reappeared again in the 2000s. I got mine in 2000, I don't know, two or three. Um, and then it was taken off the market again, so it might, it might come back again. And if it does, be sure to, to get your copy, <laughs> your copy of this record. <laughs> Play the music of the Flower of Chanel. So, so according to my interpretation, this perfume is, uh, in a garden. I mean, it's a camellia with a scent, and it's a camellia that grows on the seaside. I know that's, like, I think impossible. But uh, it is in, in the realm of Chanel. It definitely deserves, I mean, it deserves its spot way up there in, within Chanel perfumes. And I love the fact that it's called, you know, uh, un, un, or un or one flower de Chanel. Because it's a rare flower. And this camellia flower is not something to be added within the exclusives uh, line. Because uh, to me... Um, it smells very different from the exclusives. The exclusives have some sort of light motif kind of twindling between them. Even, you know, the Coromandel one and the Sycamore one, which are like the opposites. They're very intense and the rest kind of was like underneath and above. But um, this one really deserves to be like on and off. Like, uh, you know, if you would be collecting toys, there's always like a chase variant. So a, a chase figure that you would find only in some stores and some not, and it would pop up out of the blue and then disappear again. This is exactly uh, what this perfume is. And I think it's fun to hunt down this. It's like a secret garden. You know, the Brits have so many secret gardens in their mansions and it's such a beautiful concept of a secret garden. This perfume is, a, is, is part of that secret garden. And I think it would be very clever of Chanel from time to time to bring it out, not announce it at all, and then just like take it away again. And whoever gets a chance, whoever is lucky enough to enter the boutique and find that flower, to pick it, pluck it, take it home, and then it's gone again. I think that's a beautiful concept. It's extremely poetic. And it would match the name of the perfume to a T. So a flower by Chanel. Oh, it's becoming greener and greener. It's so delicious. And I mean, if green can, it's not the powdery type of green of number 19, Poudre. Not at all, because that one is a little bit, it bites you how sweet it is. This one doesn't bite ever. It stays distant, you know, as I said, like that, that sea that's far away, but it's green and powdery at the same time, but it's well-rounded with this porcelain. It's as if like a layer of beautiful white milk porcelain is covering that powder and it's covering uh, that honey and it's covering that, um, that green. It's, it's delicious. And it's, it's as if you would like, let's say you would have a bit of, you know, when you go to try the exclusives 
you have the little vials, they're not like little vials, they're like porcelain, little white, beautiful, gorgeous porcelain sticks that you take out and then they smell on top. That type of porcelain uh, is, 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 is the cover-up for this perfume. I mean, what else can I say? Yes, 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 yes. Poetry, pure poetry. Get your hands on this if you can. And Chanel, listen to me. Bring this back on the market, even if just for like a week, as a secret little, you know, um, as a secret garden for all of us fans. Thank you guys so much for watching. Give me a thumbs up on this video if you liked it. Subscribe to my channel to see more videos related to all sorts of topics and subjects. And leave me comments in the comment section below. Thank you guys so much. Take care. Bye.